when you arrive, um, you're going to park your car and then when you've got to the Ketchrigger, you're going to leave it to your port and walk around the building and find our offices. Welcome to our new look office. Uh, when you come in, your boat paperwork will be um, all here. So pick up the one that for your boat, um, and then they'll have all the details inside. The office staff will still be here um, to help you through with anything. Your new look boat pack. So you're going to, having picked up your boat, it's going to have uh, details of where the boat is located, the marina gate code, and the marina Wi Fi code. There's going to be some details um, about um, the yacht here, um, along with what we would want you to do at the end of your charter. There's uh, a useful information pack or sheet um, detailing some useful information that you might need during your charter. Um, one of the really key things is our office hours number and the out of hours number and also C starts number. Then you've got the actual details of the boat um, and your handover paperwork. So when you go down to the boat you just need to make a note of any scuffs or scratches that you can see on the outside of the yacht and any notes that you have um, to do with the inside of the yacht just mark on here. Once you're happy with that a little signature. Run through the inventory on the boat. The red items are um, your safety stuff. Once you've been through this and it does go on to two pages, ring the office and our um, fleet team will come down and um, talk you through from the pontoon um, anything that you else that you need to know. On the return of the um, charter, make sure that you're here an hour, 90 minutes to an hour before um, you're due to exit the yacht. Um, there's some reminders in here about how we like the boat left. Let us know if you have refuelled. Um, in the joining instructions, there's some details about the new requirements for refuelling at MDL. So please do make sure that you follow those. Let us know if you've used the dinghy or if you've used if you've changed the gas. And then let us know if you've got any losses, breakages, damages or defects on your yacht. Just pop those in there. Um, we do like to know about any defects so that we can make sure that we can fix them. And then once you're happy with that, a little signature. So when you're coming up to the office, you will uh, we'll also work through all of your paperwork um, with regard to your security deposit and any additional paperwork that we've asked you to bring. Um, if you need any optional extras, um, please, we do ask that you've ordered these in advance to make sure that we have them ready for you, otherwise, um, and, and paid for in advance, otherwise we can sort those out while you're in the office um, and make sure that you've got everything and all the paperwork's taken care of. Okay, so when you finish with uh, Alex in the office and uh, done your paperwork, um, when you come down to the boat, um, go on the boat and go to the Red Bible first, which will be on the chart table, and make sure you go through all of the inventory to check that everything is there, paying special attention to what's written in red, because that is your safety equipment. Once you're happy with everything, then you can give the office a call and one of us will come down 
um, to, for you to sign the paperwork and to answer any of your questions or anything you cannot find that's on the inventory we will find for you um, so if you've got any questions then we can answer all your questions and also give you tips on the best way of taking the boat out from the boat Hi, my name's Andy. I'm one of the fleet engineers. Um, so when you first come down to your boat, on the chart table will be a red folder. This is what I call the boat bible. In the folder will be all the information about the boat and all the certificates needed on the boat for, for um, charter. So when we first open the book, it will have obviously the boat name, and then obviously the boat notes and ship, uh, ship's papers. On the next page will be the yacht specification, which gives you the yacht name, type of boat it is, year of build, the lengths, drafts, beams, uh, also call signs, MMSI number, cell number, and also importantly, the uh, diesel capacity and water capacity, especially if you're doing any long passages. On the next page, we have two pages which is telling you where all the equipment is you need to know on the boat, as in batteries, engine, how to, how to start, stop, where the shut off valves are, obviously where the emergency tiller, life raft, how to use the water tanks, the anchor windlass, and also the main cell, how many reefs it's got, uh, storm jib, and the helm. So all the information about the boat is on these two pages. On the next page, we have a diagram showing you where all the through hull fittings are, as in head sinks, outlets, toilet inlets, uh, speed and transducers. So you know if you get any leaks on the boat, have a look round by where the through hole fittings are or anything like that. On the next page, which is an important one, is one again showing you where all the safety equipment is on board and where it's stowed. Next to that we have another copy of the inventory, but to do play close attention to what's in red because that is all your safety equipment that is on board and it just tells you exactly where it is. On the next page, we start going then through the boat papers. So it's just all the standard builder certificates, schedules, but an important one is your compass deviation card. So if you are doing any long passages, you just need to know the deviations for the compass. Apart from that, it is just all the certificates for all the safety equipment and shows you that they're all in date and they've all been tested. Okay, welcome to Gull. Uh, first off, the engine batteries and domestic batteries, which are these three. At the moment, they are all off. Uh, when you join the boat, they will already be switched on. So to in the vertical position, all the batteries are on. So we have, under here, we have the link switch. So if your engine battery goes flat for any reason, uh, and you need to cross connect the batteries to be able to start the engine, there is a key in the chart table, which you just put into there, switch that on, get your engine running, and once your engine's running, turn the key off and put it back in the chart table. Also here we have one for the anchor windlass breaker and another one for the electric winch. Uh, if for any reason you overload them they will trip and turn themselves off. All you need to do is come back down here and switch them back on again. Right, 
on the electrical panel, um, <clears throat> if we go to ECL tab, which that then switches on the instrument lights, so you can see what they are. They're all labelled, self-explanatory really, navigation lights, which is bow and stern, moor-in light, which is anchor light, steaming light, deck light. Then we have cabin lights, saloon lights, instrument lights, uh, then we have 12 volt socket power, which is that one, water pressure, bilge pump, fridge unit, comfort, which is the shower pumps, navigational instruments, VHF, tricolour, TV. On the 240 side, self-explanatory again, we have 240 outlets, battery charger, water heater, and that one is just spare. On as far as the batteries go, we go battery 1, which is engine start battery, gives you the voltage there, and then we go battery 2, which is the domestic batteries. We also have an amp meter that tells you how many amps you're drawing, and we have a water gauge on this side, and as the water tank is empty, it's reading zero. On go, we have two water tanks, one up forward, uh, one down aft. Uh, and to actually change a valve over to swap between the two tanks, they are situated under the starboard side of the saloon. So if we take the cushion covers off, we can then access to where the water pump is and the two changeover valves. As you can see, the two changeover valves are marked forward and aft. And as you can see, the aft one is open and the forward one is closed. So if you're out and you run out of water on one tank, so as we are at the situation we're off using the aft tank at the moment, we switch that one off and then open up the forward one. Do not have two valves open at the same time because the pump will suck air from the empty tank rather than suck water because it's easier to suck air than water. So just make sure you shut one off first before you open the other one. Our starting procedure for the engine on goal is obviously with the uh, engine battery switched on down below. The key into the ignition we turn it clockwise once, which will turn, turn power on. You'll feel a bit of resistance, but if you go to the next stage, the glow plug will come on. No more than seven seconds, and then turn the key clockwise once more to start the engine. For stopping the engine, it's just pull the stop out. Um, I'm not going to do that yet because the engine needs to be running for the bow thruster. So you've got your fuel gauge there. So with the engine running for the bow thruster, we can now switch on the bow thruster. On the panel, you have two on buttons, press them both together, and then the light comes on. Once the light's on, you can thrust the port or starboard. The bow thruster will switch itself off after about five minutes, but if you want to turn it off yourself, you just press the off button, and that switches the bow thruster off. So to stop the engine now, we just pull the stop lever. Once the engine's stopped, we can turn the ignition off, pull the key out. On go, we have three reefs in the main, it's a slab main. Uh, reef 1 and Reef 2 are single line reefing, so they can be just done by the cockpit, which when you pull one rope it will pull the clue and the luff down at the same time. Reef 3 is a standard reef, so you need to go up to the mast, hook the uh, third reef onto the, the hook on the mast, and then come back and use the clue line which is uh, in the cockpit. So it's a standard old reefing system for the third reef. The Genoa is a standard Genoa um, on the furling system. 
So please, when you're furling the Genoa in, please do not put it onto a winch. If you have problems with the furling system and you cannot pull it in by hand, then there must be a problem. If you can't see what the problem is, drop the Genoa onto the deck, give us a call, and we will sort it out or talk to you through it on the phone. Please do not try and winch the Genoa in on the winch because you could cause more damage.